1967 Hearst Harry Olds coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hey, Monster Hobbies drag racing model car building crazy fans out there. How you all doing today? Welcome back to another amazing Monster Hobbies What's in the Box unboxing review as we open up the lid on this amazing 1967 Hearst Harrier Olds by Monogram. This is a really old kit, quite unique, quite exciting. It was a reissue, actually. I have this as a reissue. But the original is just as good because it's the exact same mold. So anyway, without further ado, let's rip down to the drag strip and see what's in the box. And now we return back to the drag strip with this amazing Hearst Harry Olds dual engine drag funny car. So get ready, race fans, as we rip the lid off this mama. But first, let's take a look at the box. So, now, I'm a bit interested in this because I bought this back a long time ago. And uh, I thought it might have had a new date. I thought it was a reissued kit at the time. But it actually says copyright 67. And I can't find a barcode on this. So, I might have an original here. I'm not sure anymore. Anyway, here's our Hearst Harry Olds. And as you can see from the picture in the back, you got the engine there and the engine there. Blown Oldsmobiles. So this being a monogram kit, of course, is molded in 124 scale. And let's just crank in on the box right up here where we can read in more detail with our red pointer stick here, which I had to find. 24 scale Hearst Harry Olds model officially authorized by Hearst. Of course, they made shifter levers and all that kind of stuff back in the day. By far the most popular crowd-pleasing funny car in the world today. In 67, this Hearst Harry Olds comes off the line with all four of the slicks smoking. Imagine a four-wheel drive Olds 442 with 1,000 plus horsepower Tornado engines in front and rear doing terrifying, tire frying, wheel spins the length of the drag strip. Speed is over 185 miles an hour, climaxed by two huge colorful drag chutes popping out at the end of the run. See what I mean here? Copyright 1967 monogram models. I don't know. This could be original. All right, let's just zoom back out here. I'll turn up the box on this end. Of course, we get treated to the wonderful cartoon illustration of the thing going down the track with all four tires smoking. Smoking. There's our uh, cartoon side view. And then you can see the Tornado engines, the front wheel, front wheel drive uh, cross members in there, and uh, our transfer case, whatever. And then we've got our interior with the buckets and the front and the rear of the car. And then we'll just zoom back in again. So the two color graphics reminds me of the old computer days. <laughs> Okay, let's read this part. 24 scale Hearst Harry Olds model officially authorized by Hearst. Features of this authentic kit include two complete 425 cubic inch Tornado engines. Hillborn four port, four port uh, bug catcher fueled injection system. Two GMC 671 superchargers. Kreger blower drives. Complete driver protection roll cage. Fully detailed interior. Authentic color. Authentic full color Hearst deck all markings. Uh, cooperation and assistance of Hearst Performance Research Incorporated made this model possible. Cement and paint not included. Oh, here we go. 1995 Ravel monogram. So it's not an original, it is a reproduction. But man, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> and again, no barcode on here. So that's really me. Out. So then we get the, the other side of the box, of course. And. Now let's rip the lid off this amazing drag machine and put it over there. And it fell down. Okay, so there's our instruction sheet, which we'll get to in a minute. I bought it at Burnaby Hobbies, April 25th, 1995 for $20.95, which was a high price back then. As you see in some of my other video reviews, I've got these at like a $14 or whatever, right? 
Now this thing would be about $50, I guess. Uh, there's our uh, decal sheet inside there, so we'll take a look at all that in the video. Then we've got our body. Now I did, I think I did a little work on this, I'm not too sure. But basically there's our body. Oops. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, nice tight fit there. <laughs> There's our under frame thing, and inside is, of course, the components for, there we go, the interior, which is a tub, which was quite a thing to use back in 67. There's our front suspension. You can see it's torsion bar style, which is not typical of Wolds. There's the glass, the typical style there. Then we get roll bar and steering wheel. The wheels, which I did sand down, had to correct the slicks there. Then there's our engines. As you can see, this is quite a simple kit. Almost uh, kind of reminds you of the ones by um, Tom Daniels. That was sort of monogram style back then, 60s. Then we got our nice chrome and bucket seats and all kinds of goodies. So I'll clear this mess out of the way and then we'll look at the white components. But before we look at the white components, I forgot to look at the instruction sheet. I shall never do that again. <laughs> but anyway, maybe I will. So here we have the instruction sheet. It is a bit curled up in the box. Should be nice and flat like this. This of course is a reproduction of the 67 instruction sheet, which has the photograph of the real model on it. And then we get into of course the write-up and it's quite a big write-up in here i won't read it all but i'll read this the driver gentleman joe schubeck wears the latest in formal wear a tailored f or a tailed fire suit designed by bell okay there you go ah so i learned something about bell bell makes helmets and fire suits okay there we go then it tells you to scrape the important part, scrape metal plating away from all plated parts in areas that will be cemented so that your tester's glue will melt the plastic to the plastic. Everybody forgets that. Then they use 10x15 or whatever it's called. Okay, anyway. So, let's zoom in. So, you build these twice. But anyway, you've got your GM engine going here, the 425 Tornados with the front wheel drive component here on the transferred transmission. Oh boy! <laughs> okay, so then you got the belt in the front for the blowers and you got your engine block going together with the transmission here. Um, cylinder heads, valve covers, the nice ones. Nice uh, with the blowers in there. So you're building two of those, okay? Anyway, then we get into illustration number two, which shows the engines going into the chassis pan with our front torsion bar style suspension bolting in there, as well as the exhaust pipes, which are painted in white. Then we've got these big, massive Tornado style wheels with the slicks mounted on them, going in the front and the rear. Then we get into the interior bucket. And we've got the nice roll cage in there, the bucket seats. The interior, of course, is a pan or bucket style, tub style, dashboard. You get your steering column and steering wheel, as well as the floor pedals and shifters and all kinds of things that were in this kit in the real car, I should say. And then we get this nice illustration of the body going on. The bumpers go in front and back. Very basic. Again, much like the Tom Daniels cars of the era. And then we get our painting instructions here, which I've transferred into the um, instructions in the back. How to apply your decals, as well as photographs of the built-up model, which was popular for Monogram to do back in this era. So now let's get rid of the instructions and look at our plastic and chrome components. So as you may recall last week, I took a look at Lindbergh's 125th scale Olds 442 67. This is it here. And this is, of course, 24th scale. So you can see it's a bit longer 
but I uh, just want to show you the differences in the body. Now this one doesn't have the vents on the hood, but it does have the big hole cut in there for the engine. And then across the back under our tunneled roof here is the other hole for the other blower going in here. So I'll just move this body out of the way because that was last week. And as you can see here, it's not quite the same level of detail as the Lindbergh kit was, but the important parts are there. The 442 emblem is still there on the fender, uh, but very smooth, a smooth out version of last week's review. Next up we have our chassis pan, which is fairly simplistic. There are a lot of mold marks in this thing, so you'll need sanding blocks and of course your number 16 hobby knife. But uh, you can see a bit of a ladder frame under there, sort of the perimeter frame, this lighter section in here is what I'm trying to say. There is big uh, lettering right in there, which could also be removed. And very simple. So again, much like the uh, Tom Daniels kits of the era. Next up is this amazing parts tree with the 425 Oldsmobile Tornado motors with the transfer cases. And there's the top of our roll bar our four exhaust pipes here. There's the four cylinder heads for the motors, as well as the dashboard, the pedals, and this piece, steering column. <laughs> so let's just take a look at the fine detail on here. It's a fairly nice looking dashboard, much like our 67 out of the uh, Lindbergh kit sitting there. Maybe a little better, I don't know. The engines, of course, are very simplistic. Sort of that Tom Daniels get it quickly done style. Everything's molded onto them except the cylinder heads and the intake manifolds and the exhaust pipes and the noodles. <laughs> then our cylinder heads, they sure do look like the proper Oldsmobile cylinder heads. So again, very simplistic but not too bad. Next up we have this parts tree and of course our front suspensions here. So we've got the three caps that are the wheel retainers. The fourth one is in the box. Then I've got our uh, roll cage here. As you can see it comes up, goes down, and then there's a front support there. And then that top piece from the other parts tree would go into here. The steering wheel is a two-spoke, which I think is pretty accurate to factory. And then here's our front subframes, the torsion bars, and uh, the wheels going on. I've got one upside down and one right side up here or however you want to preference that. <laughs> I guess it should be looking from underneath the car. But anyway, it looks like a, sort of the correct Mopar style of front end for the era. You can see not too sharp on detail but there's still something there. Again very simplistic, very uh, Tom Daniels style. But in the end result, it should look quite right. Here I'm mixing mediums just a little bit because there's not much left in this kit other than the chrome in the wheels and tires. So here we have our interior bucket and there's quite a lot of the mold marks on here which would have to be addressed with uh, well you could get these ones with sandpaper, they're right across the top. They got a bit of flash on here too off the sides. So there's those bucket seats just pop into these four holes down here and then I've got our windshield and t rear window, the glass. And again, typical of a kit from 67, it's connected with all this plastic in here. So you just pop this on the inside of the roof, put your glue down there and there, and hope that you don't melt the top of the roof in. <laughs> uh, I'll just move the glass out of the way and the seats. But there's that interior bucket. As you can tell, it does sort of have the stock upholstery pattern, but again, very soft, very soft uh, detail in there. You can see all the little brackets and whatnot in this for that roll cage. But again, I mean, look at the height of those pins, the injector marks. So those have to come out. And like I was saying, a bit of flash along here, just take it out to make it a better fit fairly flat across the bottom 
and a couple little retainer loops in there just to hold it all in place. So again, very simple, but it will look right at the end. Hey everybody, thank you once again for helping support us during this pandemic by watching this great video. You know, we couldn't be doing this stuff without your help. So now let's go back to the amazing review. Next up is my favorite part of all model kits, and this is where this model actually makes up on the brownie points. <laughs> and that's in the chrome detail, and as you can see, again, very Tom Daniels style. But uh, you get the in intakes on those blowers that are here. These had the little uh, red discs in them, so when you hit the gas, they open up. There's our Tornado-type wheel covers. The front grille and the rear bumper, and you're going to have to paint in here with Tamiya Clear Red. And, uh, of course, the right colors in for your lights in here. A little bit of black wash with uh, Nuln Oil. Then, of course, we have the intake manifold with the top of the blowers, or the center of the blowers. The valve covers. There's all the blowers, the back cases of the blower, and, of course, the pulley side of it and the blowers and the belts and you'll have to paint those flat black around the edges but let's just take a look at the uh, level of detail in here and again not bad not bad on the detail the body exterior looks quite better than say the interior or something like that you can see the nice detail especially on the blower components and the belt. Just gonna see what this is on this side. Oh, that's interesting. Little T bar. That must be the shifters. The Hearst Golden Shifter. <laughs> so, anyway, again, nice chrome, nice chrome detail on there. And now let's look at the rest. Next up, we have these nice wheels. These are the big big drag slicks the four in each corner of the car and what I want to show here is there's this big sunken area and these are actually inserts the white plastic inserts that pop in um, now this would have the white wall on the inside reversed because this is the front of the wheel and then those tornado hubcaps pop in here or wheels I guess and then uh, I've sanded the edges down on these just to make them nice and slick. A little bit of a sink mark as you can see, but nothing serious. And then the insert would just plug in like that into the tire. Now what's interesting is on the insert on the inside it says Goodyear, but on the other side of the tire there's nothing there. It's just generic, so you can either paint these black, make them disappear, the whole thing, or uh, leave them as the white wall and carefully try to paint the inside. And to finish off our review, we have the decal sheet. And here you can see the Hearst Harry Oldsmobile. It, it does look like it's an angle on the instruction sheet, but when you center this on the car, it's actually sort of italicized. They've got the Champion spark plugs there, uh, Pennzoil, Goodyear. Kind of hard to pick out what these ones are. And you got that there and then here in the white we have different driver names and then down here we have different sponsors so all this will look great on your Hearst Harry Olds once you paint the body and apply the decals and that completes our look at the 1967 Hearst Harry Olds by Monogram and how many of you guys have actually built this thing out there let's tell me about it in the comment section down below or send us a picture over on our Facebook page. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing review of this exciting model kit. It was sure fun to do. And say, if you've ever built one of these, please let us know down in the comments below. Share your pictures over on our Facebook page. We'd love to see them. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Hope you guys are all doing well despite the pandemic. <laughs> But anyway, if you are, please leave a friendly comment down below saying how you're doing and how everything's going. And until next time, everyone, happy model building.